Cran pointed out uh, only an hour left of Luke time. That's not even true. It's less than that because I have to be home by that time. So uh, I'm going to jump in. Should and we do can some I, more topics? Can yeah, I do, do more my, topics. Can I do the DEF CON topic? Yeah, let's do the DEF CON topic. So I went to DEF CON and I didn't know what to expect. I've wanted to go to DEF CON since I was a wee lad um, watching the, the like, VODs of DEF CON panels on, like, I th I'm pretty sure... I think I watched them pre-YouTube even, but I know I watched some of them on YouTube back in the day. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the reason why I think I watched them pre-YouTube is because I have a bunch of them downloaded. Mm. Um, like a lot of videos from DEF CON downloaded from back in the day. Nice. Because I'm pretty sure I, I got them off of, you know, before YouTube, a lot of places you had to download video when it was on the internet. So anyways, um, always wanted to go never really wanted to go to cons by myself mm -hmm. and never really wanted to go to DEF CON, especially by myself, because it's, it's a, it, it feels scary. Um, so this time, there's a lot of hackers there. I went, yeah, quite a few. This time I went with uh, Theo and Theo's CTO, Mark, um, and Ed, and uh, not Edsel here, Edsel, a, a different Ed, uh, but I, I, I barely even ended up seeing Ed because of reasons that I'm going to explain in a second. Uh, and while we were there, we met up with Thor and, or Pirate Software and, and Primogen and a group of other people uh, that are not as much of a fan of being named or having pictures of them or anything like that. So those guys are also super cool. Everyone that I was hanging out with was were, were just legends, but I don't, I'm not going to name the other ones. Um, what I expected we would do is, you know, go to DEF CON and hang out at the show a bunch. Uh, that didn't really happen. I can't even read. No, that no, you're me. good. I'm just. Meaning. Um, what what really happened at DEF CON was we we showed up. We went to the show floor for like I don't know a couple hours, and then we got an invite from Thor Pirate Software to join him in a hotel room where they're doing a a capture the flag like challenge. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. So we went there, and all immediately became obsessed with this challenge called the the Gold Bug Puzzle. Um, okay. And this is what I ended up spending the entire rest of the event doing. No way. I sat in this hotel room with a bunch of hacker dudes on laptops and tried to solve puzzles. We were up until like six in the morning, basically every day, trying to solve puzzles. <laughs> and then we won. We won the gold bug challenge, which was amazing. Heck yeah. Uh, I don't know how much uh, it's okay for me to say we. Uh, they all think that I can, but my contribution is highly questionable <laughs> compared to certain other people there. Um, but it was really cool. And if you're interested, um, you can actually kind of do it yourself still. So the puzzle's still live. It's bbs.goldbug.cryptovillage.org slash puzzles.html. And you can find all the puzzles. They're all right here. Um, the types of puzzles that they are... This, this was just, this was so cool. And some of the people there, I, I felt incredibly dumb <laughs> being in that room because the stuff that people were able to pull off was, was wild. Um, but the one, the main one that sniped me was chess. There's all these different names for these puzzles, etiquette, chess, uh, charades, pass the slipper, whatnot. Um, we, when we started deciding like, okay, we're, we're pretty invested in this, like Mark, Mark, Theo and I, um, I started to, started to try to figure out what one can I try to contribute to? And I heard there was one named chess. So I was like, okay, I'm going to work on that. Mm. I click on the chess puzzle and this is all you get. There's this picture of this girl, uh, some text down at the bottom that reads a horseman rides across breadcrumbs dropped by a child reduced by one in file and then a chess game and you can play the chess game. Um, but like, this is it. The, the solution for the puzzle, there's just like a text box and you have to type something into it. That's all, that's all this is all you have. And you have to try to solve what this puzzle is. Um, I could go over all the things that I tried. I didn't even end up being the one who solved this, but I might have helped narrow it down. I don't know, that's questionable. Um, I noticed right away that the knight moves around in a very specific pattern. This isn't a normal chess game. If you don't interact with the knight, he just... Jumps around. The pattern of movement for the knight ends up being important to the solution. But I, I was thinking like reduce by one in file. So I was mapping down the, the movement pattern of the knight. And then the files are, are alphabetical. 
And then if you look at like a grid of the spots on a chessboard, they're all letter number. So I was reducing by one of each. So you end up going down to the left. So I like mapped out the knight's movement going down into the left. And then I, st I started trying to like, okay, maybe the puzzle is solved when a certain position on the board is met. And this was an agreement that a bunch of people had. It was like, that might be it. So I was trying to like leave, it says, you know, breadcrumbs drop by a child. So I tried like putting pawns in the place that the knight was going to move to. So it could take my pawns and like all this other stuff. None of that ended up being the case. I'm not going to give the answer of how you solve it out, but I, I tried everything. I beat the AI. I, I beat the game that way. I, um, here, let's go really quick. Where is it? Uh, if I go into here. Nope, it's not that one. Oh, I thought I clicked on script. My bad. Take back. Okay. This will only take a second. So you can, you can like reverse your moves. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So I figured out one thing that we figured out pretty quick was you can make it start to play chess. So it has logic for actually trying to beat you. Um, but there's only ways that you can even, there's only some ways you can do that. So if you like, Heart, oh, did I just break it? No, it's just, I bet you a lot of people are loading this right now. Um, if you like hard charge down the board yeah, and then just start taking stuff, it doesn't like react right away, but it will react eventually. This just breaks the game. You put their their king in check and it, it just stops working. Yeah. There's other ways that you can break the game where you can take over control of black non-programmatically like you play right. chess and it, you like confuse it in a certain way it'll do an illegal move and then because of the illegal move it passes the turn order over so you start playing black and right. the ai starts playing white so like i thought maybe okay maybe you're supposed to take over black and then win the game as black like yeah. i tried all these different things it ends up not being that type of stuff but we were working on these puzzles for essentially the entire event and that was so cool Everyone on the team that we're on were super cool to work with. It was it was very, very fun. It was very mentally satisfying getting the answers to different puzzles. That was a, a blast. It wasn't even sort of remotely what I was expecting DEF CON to be like. Cool. But it was awesome. Um, another thing that we did was Theo and I uh, were a part of a TF2 hacking challenge where you have your your team is comprised of two separate units. You have the players of TF2, yeah. and then you have a hacking group, and both sides help each other, and the score of each individual component of your team contributes into one pool of points. Yeah. So like by winning TF2 rounds, yeah. you gain score and you gain like tokens, and the tokens can be spent to get hints for the hacking team. And as the hacking team captures flags effectively, yeah. they gain points that can be spent to give you like power ups in TF2, like crit bonus and sure, all this okay. other type of stuff. So it's like that was super fun. Okay. It was a really, really cool event. Uh, and then we come down to the batch. Yeah. Okay. Which I don't know how well this is going to. You want to jump to loot cam? This is the badge for the event. So you have it hanging like this. And if I left it here long enough, it would go into badge mode. It's not in badge mode right now. Um, but you can also flip it over and it turns into effectively a Game Boy. Um, there's there's the, a new Raspberry Pi launched on the same day of the first day of DEF CON and it yeah. is in here. So it has like a new launch version of a Raspberry Pi. Um, it has a ton of features. It has an IR sensor where you can like put your badges together and like transfer across. Cool. Um, there's an SD card reader. There's a bunch of LEDs all throughout it that are all individually addressable. Yeah. So you can set up like color modes for your for your badge. Um, if I Very try cool. to get in here for a second. Oh, it's upside down. Right. Because you have to put it in like Game Boy mode. Um, they made a game. It's going to be a little bit hard to see. Yep. But as this like scrolls through, the game will start and you, you can like design your little hacker character and then you set the date and time and you can go through the DEF CON convention hall. You start in your hotel room, and then you go on the monorail, and then you end up at the DEF CON convention hall. Okay. Um, and depending on the date and time, the convention hall is like different, and there's NPCs that you can go and talk to. So yeah, I'm setting the date here and time. I'm picking my little hacker character. I'm trying to make it so the screen can see. I'm in my little hotel room now. That's wild. I can interact with How like, is this a badge for an event? <laughs> yeah. DevCon is crazy. So I go like out how the many door. of these did they make? I'm on the monorail now. 
that is one thing I was going to let people know. If they do decide to go to DEF CON in the future, I would pre-buy the badge because you can buy your ticket at the door, but it's yeah. not guaranteed that you get one of these. You might end up with a paper badge. That's a thing every time? Uh, maybe not this exact level. I've seen some past badges that weren't as cool as this. Wow. But they always have like pretty crazy badges. Okay. Um, you can you can get into the menus and like, so on here, I can change the LED colors. So let me go to... <laughs> the, the right cat eye, sure. And I'm going to make sure. it there. Okay. So I made it green. But they're all individually addressable, or you can do all of them at once. That is crazy. Um, this is the most... I think this is probably the most extra thing I have ever <laughs> seen. A lot of things at DEF CON are pretty extra. <laughs> um, Here, there's... This? Yeah, yeah. You can update the firmware on like it. Like the battery mount. I just hucked it in there. Yeah. Yeah, that part. Some people manually affixed it. I haven't taken it apart yet to yeah, do so. Yeah, okay. Um, you can, there's an SD card, so you can load other, like, ROMs for Game Boy, and you can actually play other Game Boy games, because yeah, it's yeah. a Game Boy emulator. Because why not? Um, people at the conference, like, this turned into, you know how we, we took the activity of Goldbug, and that, like, became our DEF CON. Some yeah. people took the activity of just the badge. Yeah. There's tons of different things that could consume your time. And some people, yeah, went for the badge and they 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 uh, put Palm OS on it. Okay. Because apparently this is a touch screen. No way. I mean, yeah. I don't know if it interacts with the Game Boy game, but, by default, but but yeah, you can you can do I or I saw people using like a a pen to interact with it, but yeah. Uh badges come with entrance fee. Yeah, I think it's a $20 riser to to buy it. Like it's twenty dollars more, I think, to buy the badge ahead of time. Wow! I just um, got a I got a photo for you in the game. Cool. Yeah. Or I got some kind of prize for knowing that the first DEF CON was hosted at Sands. Yeah. So it's like it's like it's an actual game. You can save your progress. You have inventory. You have all this stuff. Um, How do I check my inventory? I was in the inventory earlier. Is it on the back? Whoop. Oh, uh oh. Well, anyway, uh, I closed the game. Oh yeah, that's a that's another point. Is um, everyone scared? Everyone scared me of like you know you can't bring your devices to the show floor because you'll get hacked and all that kind of stuff. So, I brought an old Android twelve non updated phone, just set. for lulls and manually, and and so did yeah so did Theo. We didn't plan this ahead of time. We yeah. just both brought old not secure phones in an attempt. He wanted to do it for a video. I just wanted to do it out of curiosity. And then I was like, hey, I mean, if we get it to work, you can use mine in a video. You should have taken not? my phone. That honestly would have been pretty funny. Um, and we tried to connect to every open Wi-Fi we possibly could with oh. these old unsecure phones just to like see what would happen. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm my, assuming some stuff happened. No. Really? Yeah. They have a... Is like, it like security through... Everyone knows that everyone who's here is going to be bulletproof, so don't bother. Or, no. like, or what about it like backwards? Like those would be unsecured devices connecting. If you do stuff to them, they're going to oh, do stuff back. Did they maybe? like sandbox maybe. you? No, 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 no. no like Luke would be fishing backwards. Like, like wanting people to do try stuff to, to my, my phone, phone and I'll destroy you. Maybe there's a probably yeah. a bunch yeah. of mind games. Oh yeah, they had a wall of like these people have been pwned at the event, um, and it was like basically for people being silly. Um, they had some crazy Wi-Fi security thing where on the secure network hosted by the convention itself, you had to register your devices officially so they could track like individual devices at that level. You, it wasn't just free entry. It wasn't just entry with a password. You like it was wall of sheep. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Wall of sheep. And it's like if you, if you goof and get owned at the event, um, but yeah, okay, what what Kaboom Pow just said ends up being, I think, ultimately it. No one's going to blow a zero day on you. Right. So you're like standard devices. Like no, no one's going to do something super sophisticated at DEF CON. Right. Because what's the huge value there? Um, but there is other things going on and people do get pwned and there is Wi-Fi networks that are trying to capture you. Like I noticed uh, a trick that people were doing was they were trying to set up Wi-Fi networks that were open that had the same SSIDs that you'd run into at like an airport and stuff like that. And devices were automatically connecting to it. Right, but okay. I don't think they were actually doing things super malicious. They were just trying to catch you to get you on the wall of sheep. Got it. Okay. Like they, it was a game. 
Okay. I think. I don't know. Unless I'm sure I'm sure there's people that go to DEF CON and do things that are bad. Yeah. But like it it didn't seem like actually a huge deal. So if you're like really scared, you know, don't do silly things. I would highly recommend if you go to the show floor with a device, manually turn off your Wi Fi. So that just in case you've connected to open networks before and someone tries to get you with the like naming a network as the same thing, or whatever, you're not going to automatically connect to it because your Wi-Fi is just off and you only go off the cellular data. Um, yeah, someone said, and Bluetooth. Yeah, it's a great idea. Um, just turn off things that are going to automatically connect to networks. Um, but yeah, it was tons of fun. They even have a section that's just for like kids to learn how to get into uh, security and and testing of different things, which is really cool. They had a lock picking village where they had just like a chain link fence with a ton of different locks attached to it. And you could try out all these different lock picks and, and learn from other people there that would teach you. That's kind of cool. Um, it was actually a very almost like wholesome, positive event. And I had a ton of fun. I'm, I'm definitely going hearing you describe it. I'm surprised that this was your first time. Yeah, I've always wanted to go. Yeah, but no one really wanted to go with me. And then uh, Theo and I were both thinking of going, and Thor was like, "No, you guys are coming." And it was like, "Well, all right, sounds good." Do they have social engineering seminars? Yes, they do. How did you meet people? I mean, uh, most Everyone, everyone's there for the same reason, I guess, right? Like, yeah, and most people that I met while I was there, I was planning on meeting, unless. Right like Thor who introduced us to that, that group of people that again, I don't think they want to be named. So I'm going to leave that out. But, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was really sick. Can run doom. Yeah. I'm not surprised. People were talking at the event, like, can it run doom? And, and the consensus of most people was yes. And it probably already does. Someone pr at the event probably made this happen already. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Hilarious. not surprised. There was some drama around the badge. I don't know all of it. Um, but I'm not super surprised because I think there was a huge amount of contributors and to make something this complicated as just the badge to an event, I don't know. I'm not surprised there were some issues, but yeah, I, I don't know all the drama stuff, but if you want to look it up, I, as far as I know, it's like pretty heavily documented on, on Reddit and other places. So you can go figure that out. 